When I realized as a youngster that I didn't possess the abilities to play or manage, administrate, or coach at a professional level, I realized the next best alternative would probably be broadcasting. So that's where I got hooked. And it really goes all the way back to Pikesville High School in the mid-80s when I did the school announcements in the morning when everyone was in homeroom lead the school in the national anthem of the Pledge of Allegiance as it was back then. And we could say God then. List, you said the pledge? I said the pledge, listed other pertinent announcements that morning, and uh, then was sent back to my homeroom. Did you ask for the job? Or how did, of course how did, I asked for the job. Was, was somebody else doing it before you? and say, hey, who wants to do uh, this? I think I did uh, lobby for the job. Someone else had had the position when I came in as a freshman. It intrigued me. It also led to me doing the Pikesville High basketball games as their PA announcer. So I had a lot of fun with that because that team went to the state championship and I had the opportunity to call their games even in College Park, which was quite a thrill to be chosen to do that. And I uh, owe a lot to the great Sam Norman, former Pikesville High School basketball coach, for that opportunity since he cut me from his team. Not that I haven't gotten over that. <laughs> and what were the sports that you would have been interested in playing? Professor? Well, the NBA would have been tops. It was always my favorite sport growing up. It has since come to be the NFL and football, but certainly uh, pro basketball in the NBA was always my dream. Having a basketball court, being fortunate enough to have it in my backyard, and pretending I was Magic, or Dr. J, or Larry Bird, or whoever it may have been back then. Even Michael Jordan, even though I couldn't jump worth a lick, or French lick. It's a Larry Bird reference. That's really what was my ambition in life, was to be a pro basketball player. Failed at that, tried baseball, failed at that, never attempted football, didn't want to deal with the contact, played some tennis, still do, fooled around with some other sports, but my job has given me the opportunity to be around the greatest athletes in the world for the last 20 plus years. So as you said, you model yourself in terms of athletics on certain certain athletes. Were there examples in broadcasting that you emulated as a, as a kid? Uh, well, the guy over my uh, right shoulder, left on your camera dial, certainly was a hero, and that would be the great late Howard Cosell, who always prided himself in telling it like it is, never kowtowed to any team, league, organization, although some would argue that. For the most part, he was a straight shooter, and that's how I like to portray myself, as someone who's a straight shooter and tells it like it is. I like to tell it to the fans as it really is and give my opinion. may not always agree, but at least I'm honest, and I can put my head on my pillow at night comfortable knowing that I've told the truth and been honest with the people listening and watching me. Are there some favorites of yours, things that you're most proud of in terms of the stories that you, or questions within interviews that you've asked? I know there's a Mike there Tyson. quite a few, yeah. Mike Tyson gone after him after I thought he was laying down after a fight in D.C. and just collecting a paycheck, challenging Barry Bonds when he made some comments about Babe Ruth and came through Baltimore. Certainly one of my more infamous moments was with former NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabue back in January of 2001, a few days before the Ravens went out and beat the heck out of the Giants in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 35. I asked him point blank at a State of the League address about some comments that he had made previously when the city of Baltimore was trying to obtain an expansion team. I believe it was 93, 94 in that time frame. Ended up going to the cities of Jacksonville and Carolina. And at that time, someone asked Tagliabue, what about Baltimore and their chances and he maintained that there was a lot of other things the city could do with its money like building a museum and that obviously rubbed a lot of people the wrong way in Baltimore and finally more than 10 years later I got a chance to ask the guy about that and he evaded the question for the most part but it was a great moment. Actually it wasn't more than 10 years later doing my math it would have been about seven or eight years later but still to this day it sticks in the craw of Baltimore sports fans when you mention the name Paul Tagliabue, still despised throughout the city. Of all the sports that you cover, which do you like uh, covering the most? Be the National Football League, definitely the NFL. I like the way it's a conduced season, the intensity that it brings each and every night. Let's face it, it's been my opinion, being fortunate enough to cover all four major pro sports. These guys, frankly, do not give their effort every single night, especially the NBA and Major League Baseball as well. It's too many games. And 
the fact that you're only involved in 16 in the regular season, maybe four more if you're lucky enough to make the playoffs, means that for the most part these NFL guys play hard each and every week. They're good guys to be around for the most part. They're congenial, they're approachable despite their size, and there's a reason it's the most popular sport in the world out there besides gambling, is the fact that it's an enjoyable sport to watch and follow. Now how do you prepare for, for your assignments? Research. Internet, reading, following television and radio interviews, and racking my brain for my history. That's usually the preparation that involves doing a talk show, going out in the field and reporting, whatever it may be, writing a blog. And you've been doing preparation since you were a kid. Again. Oh yeah, doing reading when you know the internet wasn't around before Al Gore invented it, unless he didn't. And since then, it's kind of made uh, life easier for sportscasters, the internet, because, let's face it, you can look up almost anything you want instantaneously. Back in the day, you'd have to do some hardcore research. It's actually gotten a little easier in that respect. It's gotten tougher in keeping up with the social media and all that, and trying to stay current with everything, because everything's so instantaneous. There's no more tape delay. It doesn't work that way anymore. We have to know it right away. So. That's what's changed a lot about the industry. What about writing? What about filming when your battery light or the light on your camera is blue? Yeah, yeah. Is that an yeah. indication of a low battery? We have time. time. It's good for you, though. Oh, absolutely. I'm hoping the thing goes out within the next 30 seconds. <laughs> so, how do you keep in shape? <laughs> well, besides lifting weights and running 22 miles a day, nothing. Uh, absolutely nothing. I like to play occasional tennis, slip in some basketball every year and a half. And besides that, I do a lot of running up and down my stairs. Could I be in better shape? Absolutely. Should I be in better shape? Probably. But about as good a shape as this camera's in as it runs out of juice. And your voice, though, as a, as a broadcaster. That's a misnomer. I mean, your voice, there's no vocal lessons I do. I clear it in the morning. I drink a lot of water. Besides that, there's really not much else you can do except get some good disability insurance because if you lose your voice and you're in broadcasting, you're pretty much out of luck, unless you're a mime. Do you have insurance? I do have disability insurance. Isn't that prying a bit too much into this conversation? Not for your voice. But for you youngsters out there, yes, I do recommend disability insurance, yes. Yeah, if I lost my voice, I'd be without a, a vocation for the most part. I'd be holding a camera like you right now. You don't need a voice to do that unless you're asking questions. And so far the questions have been pretty good. What I'm about very surprised. 